this is really the, the heart of the prep area, isn't it? It's a the serious chopping board. workstation. Yes, yeah. very serious. Um, What's this all about, though? Well, if one's using this for chopping, this just means that you can actually get the chopped vegetables into a round skillet without them disappearing onto the floor. I see. I mean, it creates this unbelievable sense of space, maybe even uh, a false one. Well, it does really. I mean, our seating line is at that level. Yeah. So it'll close in once you get the roof in. But this is going to go out, right? Yeah. As you might remember, we have, we're taking this dormer right the way out to either side. So what have you got on back here? Oh, there's some old seats on here. Right? And this is your morning's load of stuff? This is the morning, yeah. So what do you do with the sinks? Well, I take the taps off, save it up, you know, so I get enough brass, and then we sell the brass, you know. Funding for this old house is provided by State Farm Insurance. Keeping our promise of protection with auto, home, life, and health insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by. Parks Corporation, makers of safe and simple, environmentally responsible stains and finishes that enrich, protect, and preserve the natural beauty of wood. Hey, Norm. Hi, Steve. It looks like every tourist in London has turned out to see the changing of the guards out in front of Buckingham Palace. Yeah, well, I think they're going to be a little bit disappointed because even though it's uh, around 11 and it's Thursday, the official changing of the guard has been canceled because of the rain. Well, they're riding, but they're not changing. Huh? Yeah. Well, that's too bad, but it's a great old uh, palace, huh? It sure is, but, you know, it started just as a little brick residence. And every monarch who ever lived here had a different idea of how grand it should be. Uh, yeah? And the most interesting story I read was about George IV. He had a very bold move. He had a little permit for minor repairs, but he had a different idea in mind. He shrouded the building in a scaffolding system and built a whole You're new kidding. palace. So when was the first anybody saw it? When, when they took the scaffolding down? Exactly. And Parliament went mad. Because he was spending their money. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, it's too bad about the change of the guard, but uh, we do have a busy day, so we best head over to the site, huh? Yeah. Now I'm going to make one stop to pick something up, so I'll meet you over there. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I can't get over the British weather. It's freezing one day, it's warm the next, and today it's rather spring-like. And in some areas, the forsythia is even starting to bloom. And over here is our contractor, David Booth, with a horse and buggy. Steve, good to see you again. What's the horse and buggy all about? This is John, our rag and bone man. Hello, John. Oh a rag and bone rag man? And bone man yeah. well, what kind of a trade is that? We're just picking up old junk, old lumber, you know, anything like that. So you go around to construction sites and do this? Well, yeah, everything really. Old houses, stuff like these, you know. Yeah? But I'm picking up bits and pieces. With a, with a horse and buggy? With a horse and cart, yeah. What's, what's the horse's name? Bill. Bill. Having his breakfast, huh? Yeah, he's having Hello, Bill. Ha. Huh. Boy, nice old horse, huh? He's a good old club, yeah. yeah. So what have you got on back here? Well, there's some old sinks on there and that, you know. And this is your morning's load of stuff? This is the morning's, yeah. So what do you do with the sinks? Well, I take the chaps off, save it up, you know, so I get enough brass, and then can sell the brass, you know. Sell the brass. And you got yeah. a hunk of lead pipe, it looks like. Bit of, bit of iron. Somewhat galvanized grating. grating. Yeah, right. A bicycle? An old bike someone might have, you know. What's this over here? Old Uber. An old vacuum cleaner, huh? <laughs> huh, that's terrific. So this is serious, David. Uh, you didn't just put us up to this. No, this is this is, is real. I mean, John comes by here what, once, twice a week. Yeah. And if we've got stuff, we give it to John. It's either John or in the skip. Mm -hmm. So it's recycling, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have you been doing this? 60 years, nearly. 60 years. Did your dad do it as well? No, he never died young, young man. Yeah? Yeah. Why the horse and buggy? Well, it's an actual advert, isn't it? People know what you're doing. You've got no... Nothing to hide, have you can't hide nothing on it. It's in the open, so people uh -huh. know. It's the traditional way of doing it. I mean, this is what the rag and bone man used to look like hundreds of years ago. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of years, isn't it? Uh, I bet the kids love it. Oh, they love it. And the horse. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you, sir. Good okay. luck to you. We'll see you again. Good luck to you, Gab. Let's get the tour. There's been quite a lot happening. Well, David, there's been a lot of progress since we were last on site some eight weeks ago. Well, Christmas is over and the scaffolding's up. <coughs> this structure goes up about 50, 60 foot up on these poles clamped together. We've got a similar structure over on the other side. We've bridged across with a temporary corrugated iron uh, roof on the top, mm -hmm. all wrapped around with the plastic tarpaulin. What about the gaps? Well, we've got to have some gaps there because the wind's going to come in and it's got to get out somewhere. If it doesn't, it's going to lift the whole structure up. 
Dicey. And make us unpopular. <laughs> what about cost? Well, our initial quote was £7,000, but we managed to get it down to £4,000. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still a significant piece of change. Indeed, yeah. Now you've gutted the building, or stripped out as you call it. Yeah, we got rid of most of the dusty stuff. That came down in a big chute down here into mm -hmm. a skip here. How many of these did you use up? We used about five or six. Uh -huh. mm. So all of this stuff had to be trundled through these busy streets of London and off to who knows where. Well, it goes about 60 miles north of London to a dump site there. Mm -hmm. How have the neighbours reacted? Well, in an urban site like this, we're always going to have, you know, maybe one or two uh, objections. Mm -hmm. But one of the ways that the council helps on that is, with the planning application that we got upstairs, they post a notice like this. And that tells them, the public that something's happening or about to happen, where they can go and see the plans, mm -hmm. and who to make comments to. Mm -hmm. Anybody objected? Not so far. That's nice. You must be thankful for this front courtyard, huh? Well, in a site like this, any space is useful, and this is a very useful holding area for mm -hmm. materials. What would you do without it? Well, we'd have a problem, that's for sure. But come on up and have a look to see what we're doing upstairs. On my way over from the tube stop, I noticed no less than six of these once grand houses being converted into apartments. Well, the days of upstairs and downstairs are over, Steve, and uh, really, we're, a lot of the London houses have been converted into apartments like these. The days of servants are long gone. Steve, you haven't seen in here before. This is the, uh, the apartment just below ours, and as you can see, they're really up at the finishing stages. Boy, I'll say. Well, they got the plaster in. Windows. A couple more weeks, they'll be wanting to carpet the place. Well, I know, and that's giving us headaches because we've only just got to realise where our services are going. We've got saw pipes and wiring, which we need to put in with access from down below here, and they want to get their ceiling up. Plus, you've got the roof off. Tell me about it. I've got <laughs> headaches. But it means with two contractors on the site like this, we've really got to work together well. <laughs> you, you blew the place to bits. Well, I told you we were stripping out. I mean, was all of this really necessary? Well, yes, it is. I mean, we, we've got to put a new roof up here because of the extra loading for our roof access. Yeah. And the scaffolding's got to clear the chimney pots, and we need a decent fall to get rid of the rainwater goods. Holy smoke. I mean, it creates this unbelievable sense of space, maybe even uh, a false one. Well, it does really. I mean, our seating line is at that level. Yeah. So it'll close in once you get the roof in. But this is going to go out, right? Yeah. As you might remember, we have, we're taking this dormer right the way out to either side. And in fact, the brickies are working over here. We can see a bit more clearly what's going to happen. Well, gutting a building is always dramatic, but this one is unbelievable. It really does make hey a guys. difference, doesn't it? Yeah, well, here we are. And this dormer, like over on the other side, is being pushed forward in line with this window. There's going to be a steel supporting beam going right across the building, tying in with this new brickwork here. And uh, Sean here is bricking up. He's standing on the scaffolding on the outside of the building. And that line, the new line, is being inclined up to take the steel and then meeting up with the existing uh, top line of the, of the brickwork there. Mm -hmm. You can see the old line there. That's right, that's right. Norm is not going to believe this one. <laughs> Boy, with the all the plaster gone, you can really see the old bones in the place, huh? How big was your crew? Oh, we had about uh, 95 laborers, <laughs> three chippies. <laughs> the usual. Three, yeah. uh, we've had about six, seven people working on it so far. Yeah, yeah. my God. Yeah. Hey, Norm. You blew the place away. You've blown the place away, David. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this reminds me of those old documentary films that I used to watch about London after the war. Yeah. Except, uh, this looks just like it. That's well, just our weekend project. Yeah, more than a weekend's worth of work here. Glad you brought this along. Yeah, you ever see one of these, David? No, yeah. I've heard of one, but I've not seen one before. Well, it's a pneumatic nailer, and by the looks of the amount of work you're going to have to do here, this is going to help. So uh, if you gather up the chippies, we'll put the system together, and I'll show you how it works. I look forward to that. OK. Well, all right, fellas, I just wanted to take a little bit of your time to introduce you to this tool, the pneumatic nailer and the compressor. And there's certain maintenance things that you should take care of every day, and there's some safety considerations that are real important because this is a very useful tool, but as with any tool, you've got to use it carefully. As far as the controls go, you really don't have to worry about this first gauge very much because that's just an overall pressure gauge of what's in the tank, 
This has a switch which automatically turns it on when it gets low on air and turns it off when it reaches the right pressure. The second one is the one that's important. That one controls the amount of air going to the gun. And you have to make sure you check the individual gun for its need because they vary. But generally, they're around 80 pounds. And by turning this knob, you can vary the pressure up or down. Now, the hose itself is uh, pretty maintenance free. You just plug them in as necessary. Now, the gun, this is the key to the whole operation. Uh, the first thing you want to do in the morning is put a couple drops of oil down through this air inlet. What, and it, what, what do you do that for? Well, it's to lubricate the inner works of the tool. There's a whole series of rubber O-rings in here. And by putting the right oil in there, it just lubricates. Now, the nails that you're going to be using in the gun come in clips like this. What, what is this coloring? Well, this coloring is actually an adhesive. And this nail gets shot into the wood so quickly that it generates some heat. And it'll make this sticky. And believe me, uh, you want to make sure you know where you're putting the nail, because if you have to pull them out, it's going to take a good size bar. Now, to load the gun, you pull back this until it clicks. And you can put three clips of nails. That's the maximum that will go in. These are four inch nails, and you can use nails that are shorter. Then you just squeeze this together, and that will keep pressure feeding the nails in. And just plug in the other end of the tool. OK, now, in using the tool, the most important thing is safety glasses. Because if a nail hits a knot or, a, or another nail, uh, it can come back out at you. So for instance, let's take this block of wood right here. If I wanted to nail this up here, a couple things you don't want to do. You don't want to have your hand here and put the nail gun there. Because there's a possibility that the nail could curl around come out the side and hit your thumb or whatever. And believe me, they don't stop for flesh. So you want to hold the wood as far away from the gun as possible. And you see that knot, even though it's a small one, you don't want to shoot nails through knots if possible. Just hold the trigger. And as soon as you contact that, it's going to fire. See that, a four inch nail, like Beautiful. nothing. You want to give well, it a try? I'll put my goggles on. OK. And we'll have a go. And you just press the trigger and, yeah, and just Contact. There you go. Brilliant. Look at that. You'll never use a hammer again. Um, certainly won't. <laughs> I think you've made a convert. I think you sold it. <laughs> I think you sold it. Well, you know, that's really part of the show for us is to go around and show the public all the new tools and all the new building technologies. What do you do? Well, we can find out a lot of information from trade magazines and exhibitions like Interbuild. But uh, there is a place in London called the Building Centre mm -hmm. uh, that has a lot of these things on display. Perhaps you'd like to take a, take a walk down there and have a I look. I would. Great. How about you, Steve? Well, actually, I've got a meeting with our homeowner and our architect, so I better hang around. But uh, give me a full report, will you? I'll fill you in. Okay. We'll see you later. Okay. Cheers. Well, here are five floors of displays of materials and products that architects and builders can come in and view. But also, more importantly, the general public are welcome in to take a look. Hmm. So I guess we're passing through Brick Alley. It's, it's good display, isn't it? And indeed, there are further displays of bricks throughout the building. Really? Now, once someone comes here and finds a product that they like or are interested in, can they purchase it right here? No, this is a, is a showcase, if you like. And if they are interested in something, then they can take that up with the manufacturer. I see. Huh. I think I could order one of these for my new house. Well, would it fit in? <laughs> But there are products here for shops, offices, as well as for the home. So it's commercial and residential. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Take a look at this flooring over here. I, I've used this several times. It's really quite interesting. Now, oh, is this wood? Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? In fact, it's a vinyl. Very, very durable. And it has these options of these patterns that you can make in, into an individual design for your home. Oh, I see. You know what's nice about coming to a place like this is that you can physically touch the materials. You can see them up close. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It's it different sure from does. just a brochure. That's right. Well, there's several, several displays of spiral staircases, and we're looking for one for, for Jeremy and Carla. We ought to get them down to have a look. Yeah, I think they'll find a lot of things here. Yeah. Well, the displays here, the displays on the floor, on the walls, even on the ceiling. Take a look at that. Huh, the attic stair. Wow, I've never seen one like this. Well, I suppose the country that engineered the Range Rover would have no trouble engineering an attic stair. Well, it's fairly robust, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. 
Hey, now, what's this? Looks like uh, an embossed drywall. Well, isn't it interesting? Yes, they've embossed a panel on a conventional drywall. And this gives a really ineconomic way of making a, a, an ordinary wall very elegant. Yeah, now, do you install it with the same methods as drywall? Precisely the same methods, that's oh. right. Now, that's a really good idea. I wonder if we have any of this back in the States. On this floor, Norm, we've got heating, plumbing, doors, windows, traditional sinks. Some glazed tile. Yeah. And glazed tiles, take a look over here. The traditional English pub. Well, if you wanted to recreate one over in Boston, here's the place to get all the bits. Yeah, it'll go well with my revolving door. <laughs> This is the door and window department, and uh, this is an interesting window, Norm. The, uh, this is a casement window, but with a handle in a different position, it becomes a tilt. Wow, that is really interesting. Nicely finished. Yeah, and it's beautiful mahogany. Mm. And I guess we had some commercial doors. Is it anti-graffiti door? Yeah, did you bring your spray can to give it a test? <laughs> no, I never heard <laughs> of such a thing. This is an elegant door, isn't it? A nice mahogany yeah. door. And also with an interesting security system. The, uh, this brass mechanism is mortised into the edge. And with one flick of the handle, it shoots out these three bolts to give a simple but effective security to the door. Yeah, and it actually adds a lot of strength to the edge of a wooden door. Yeah, that's right. Great. Well, David, this is a beautiful floor. Isn't it lovely? It gives a, a lovely farmhouse effect, doesn't it? Yeah. This is terracotta tiles, and they've used the shapes in the, to make a very interesting design. It is very nice. Order me up a thousand square feet. <laughs> now, this is uh, insulation, I guess, huh? That's right. And it's uh, showing an application around the steel girder. Yeah, this is a mineral wool. I haven't seen this in years, mm -hmm. because we use mostly fiberglass or rigid insulations. Well, we use that too, but this is useful for certain applications, especially since it's moisture resistant. In a cavity wall like that, it's, uh, it's a, a good material. Yeah, with all that masonry and dampness, I guess that would be the ideal place. Mm. You know, the other thing I like about being here is that I actually get to see the product applied. It's good to see how it's put together, isn't it? Yeah. It's very useful. Well, we've got another three floors to see yet, Norm, so we better get moving. Okay. The kitchen here living space, reception area, and right here where we're standing now will be the master bedroom. Right. But the place looks huge with the roof taken off of it. Mm -hmm. Just try and imagine it with the roof put back on. It's going to be quite small and quite compact. It still looks quite spacious to me, though. But within this space, we're going to fit in a kitchen up to this wall here. Right. A bathroom with a jacuzzi, soaking Japanese tub, bath. Japanese bath, <laughs> and uh, over here, the master bedroom. So right. it's all going to be quite contained. Yes. But if, I think if we're going to become tucking a cupboard in there and just have some very simple bedroom furniture, we should be all right. I think the, the point is that there isn't really space for any clutter. So you better get clearing out. We're not very tidy <laughs> people. <laughs> well, that'll work then. <laughs> so leaving aside space for the moment, right. you've got the kitchen here, and it opens on to this great space that runs the whole width of the building, right? That's right. It will, it'll be open plan from this wall all the way down to this wall at the end here. Well, that'll be very spectacular. Mm -hmm. Then you've got your entryway here, right? Yeah. The entrance at the moment is boarded up with a door. We're going to open this space up onto mm -hmm. the whole of the rest of the flat. And steal some views from we'll, the... We'll have a view all the way through from the front to the back. But right. to meet the building regulations, we also have to put in uh, a lobby for mm -hmm. fire reasons. Mm -hmm. We're going to build a gallery over the top of that with bookcases along the side of it. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. So that leaves this area here where the lads are having tea. How are you doing? What's to become of this? All we've got to try and fit into here is uh, another guest bedroom, a bathroom with a toilet and a shower. Um, Carla would say that's easy. Don't forget the spiral staircase. Oh, of course, yeah. We've got the roof deck upstairs, so we've got to get up the spiral staircase to get onto the roof deck. Well, it sounds like you've got some close figuring to do with <laughs> your, your pencil and calculator. But I do love the idea of an open plan. That's actually thanks to you, Steve, when you suggested we open up all of this view to the west here, put all our living space along there. Well, that's your so, million-dollar view, isn't yeah. it? But it does suggest that the kitchen is one that's very much on display. It's going to have to be functional, but it's going to be some kind of a work of art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, Jeremy is the cook of the family, correct? He fancies himself as a chef, yes. He fancies himself that way. Well, you're lucky here in London to have one of the world's premier designers and fabricators of kitchens. And we have arranged to go down to their showroom 
will start out at the very top, and if his wallet is deep enough, he can See, buy can the very best. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think so far? I like it. I like all of it. That's the problem, really. It's a bit too much. It's not just kitchens, you know. I mean, take a look at this bedroom. What an elegant room. Hmm. Have a look at the, uh, the detail in this cabinet. Hey, look at that. And I love the finish, too. This yeah. rubbed antique it's finish. It's really impressive, isn't it? Well, don't let your wife come in here. <laughs> she'll, she'll want one for sure. Yeah. Also, take a look in here at this bathroom. Again, you know, just very elegant. And I suppose they achieved that by these fitted panels hmm. around the whirlpool here. And again, they've built a lovely surround for the WC, a true water closet. Hmm. And here, these drawers with the inlays. That's just very a very nice. stately feel to it, isn't That's it? Right. Well, we're here for kitchens. That's right. And over here, we've got our designer, Hugh Owens. Hello. Hugh, this Hello, is Hugh Thomas. Pleased to meet you. You've created some extraordinary environments here. Thank you very much. Please, show us around this one. Yes, certainly. Probably one of the distinctive features in this kitchen will be the rope detail we've used. This kitchen we actually call the barley twist. The barley twist. Nice. Built actually from antique wood, we take demolition material, restore it, and build the cabinetry from that. So the doors here can be up to about 150 years old. The insides, of course, they will be more up to date mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of providing functional mm -hmm. storage, etc. It's a very elegant environment for your for my canned, cat food. Yeah, cat food. <laughs> and a nice place for the stove. Yes, that's something which oftentimes if a room is maybe lacking certain architectural features, we perhaps recommend that a client go ahead and maybe create a hearth for their stove. Mm -hmm. And you give your clients, of course, a choice of counter materials. I Absolutely. Um, first of all, obviously, we'd help them select the appropriate furniture style, and then from that, complementary countertop, backsplash, mm -hmm. flooring, etc. Now, this is really the, the heart of the prep area, isn't it? With a the serious workstation. Yes, very serious. Um, What's this all about, though? Well, if one's using this for chopping, this just means that you can actually get the chopped vegetables into a round skillet without them disappearing onto the floor. I see. And this? That's a waste chute. There you can actually scoop the waste. That will then collect in a stainless steel drawer, and that can be taken off to the compost heap. Very well thought out. How about this over here? Another very nice feature, in this case, that's concealing the refrigerator. Right. Um, this particular appliance allows us to actually put a furniture door on the front. The two open together, but of course then when it's closed, it looks like a piece of furniture, mm. not an appliance. Mm. Invisible. Now this hanging pot rack is one of the trademarks of your firm, isn't it? Very, very popular. Um, a lot of people, I think, like to have their own personality added to a room by mm -hmm. maybe hanging bits and pieces that are important to mm -hmm. them. Well, it's got a very informal country feel to it, doesn't it? What do you think? Oh, I like it. I mean, all the amenities are very nice. But as you said, it's um, perhaps a bit traditional for us. Have you got something maybe a bit more contemporary? Yes, let me show you a kitchen we have on upstairs. Good. Okay. Well, look at this. Around every corner, there is another dynamite kitchen. Yes. I love the way you integrate the kitchen as if they've always been there, but each one has a distinctive look. That's right. This is actually part of our hand-painted collection of furniture. Uh, this is basically manufactured, installed in the client's home, simply primed. The decorative artwork's then done on site, so it mm. could be any color, any style of painting. So no two are the same, I take it? I doubt we've ever done two quite the same. Oh, look at this. This actually is the kitchen I wanted you to see. This is a wonderful look, huh? All wood, but uh, what type of wood? This actually is sycamore. Which is in the maple family, That's right, right exactly. Very Beautiful nice. blonde timber. Yeah, and what are these? Uh, these actually hand-woven willow baskets. Um, people would use those perhaps to store potatoes, vegetables, things like that. But being willow, if they should get grubby, you can take them to the sink and actually scrub them. Great. Very nice look. Sort of a rustic look. And over here you've got your stove area. Yes, combination really of open and closed storage. In this case, open storage for pots and pans. Some drawers down here. Glass fronted or solid. Uh -huh. Same on the upper. We can have uh, glass fronted. This is actually acid etched. And you've got some lovely tools here. Are these custom made and That's designed? Right, designed by Smallbone. Yeah. Um, nice sort of combination of stainless and wood. Yeah. Mm. And I love how you've repeated this motif here. And this is this an inlay? That's right. Marquetry inlay. It picks yeah. up very nicely the two there. Looks like a fine Spanish guitar. Very yes. nice work. <laughs> and uh, a hi-fi center right in the kitchen. Well, almost, yes. That's actually the dishwasher in this case. Uh, this particular model allows us to put, again, a cabinet door on the front, and uh -huh. two open together. And it look does look that. obviously very built in. Very fancy looking stainless steel dishwasher. Teak around the sink. That's right. Um, obviously, that's selected for its excellent properties with water. Right. 
Now over here you have the same breadboard arrangement we saw downstairs. That's it. And something a little different, a uh, sort of a low counter here. What's this all about? That's actually very practical. That's um, particularly good for things like food processors or mm -hmm. mixers, where perhaps the motor's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. By setting them at a lower height, they're much mm -hmm. more comfortable to actually operate. Mm -hmm. in, in a real kitchen, obviously, you'd have some electrical outlets here. Right. And a stool? Yes, matching stool, table, and chairs. Right. Um, complete interior. Oh, I see. You do the whole thing. That's right. Treat everything as furniture. Exactly. Well, what do you think of this style? I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's really close to what we had in mind. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think we can find a style here, certainly. What's the next step? Well, I'd suggest, actually, that perhaps we have a meeting on site. Um, that way I can take some dimensions, maybe get a feel of the room, and talk to you in a little bit more detail about the sorts of things you'd like to incorporate. Mm -hmm. All right, that sounds good. And the big question, I suppose, is since we are looking at the very best of the best, can we even afford it? We'll also give you an estimate. OK. Right. Well, thank you for your time. Very nice to meet Jeremy, you. Jeremy, I'll be seeing you very All soon. Right, definitely. Take care, gentlemen. Well, where else but London could you begin the show at Buckingham Palace, continue on with the Rag and Bone Man, and then wind up here at one of the world's premier kitchen firms? Well, next time, the drama continues. Until then, I'm Steve Thomas for The Soul. Funding for This Old House is provided by State Farm Insurance. Keeping our promise of protection with auto, home, life, and health insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Parks Corporation, makers of safe and simple, environmentally responsible stains and finishes that enrich, protect, and preserve the natural beauty of wood. This is PBS. Steve Thomas's book, This Old House Kitchens, can be ordered by calling 1-800-441-3000. Fully illustrated with photos and drawings, this soft cover reference presents every aspect of kitchen design and construction. The price is $24.95 plus handling. Please have your credit card ready. The book is also available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.